few minutes early. I saw some of you waiting, so I thought I'm not going to make them wait. <laughs> Hello everyone, Wanda here. So tonight is kind of fun. Um, I've been having a lot of new members and lots of questions about foiling and tools and um, glue and you know all the supplies that we use. So that's what tonight is about and I'm going to A to Z. I was going to kind of do a basic thing so as not to confuse everyone, but I think everyone's pretty much confused. So <laughs> let's unconfuse. Hello, Lori and Sidna, or Sid, yeah, Sidna, <laughs> Allison. Hello. All right. So these are some examples of foiled rocks. You can, these are pretty basic. Well, that one's not done, but. <laughs> Um, like this is a full metallic and then they're double foiled. They have a full metallic on the bottom and then another style on top. And then, um, this one has many different foils. There's two double foiled here, two here, and one on top here on top of fabric. And then this one has many different foils. There's a red and a blue and a snake skin and a dragon print and a, another snake skin. So you can be as detailed or as basic as you want with foil. I think it opens the door to a lot of different, um, a lot of different ideas. You can bling up your work. So tonight I'm going to do a little fox, a basic fox. and um, talk about what foiling is while we go along. So this is sort of what it's gonna look like without foil, <laughs> but I'm gonna use watercolor so they dry fast. When I say watercolor, I'm gonna use watercolor pens. Hi everyone, I can't see my comments. Let me see if I can get them on my TV. Oh, lovely. <clears throat> so I hope everyone is doing well on this Monday evening. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Tammy. why I can't see the chat on my TV. Strange. Okay. Anyways, let's get back to it. Hi, Christine and Deborah. Okay. So, um, with foiling, you can foil on top of pretty much anything. Um, it works better, um, on paints that are matte or really, really dry. If you're going to foil on top of um, multi-surface paint or a high gloss varnish or a paint um, know that your foil has the potential to stick to that also because it loves to stick to sort of tacky surfaces. There is a glue um, that is white and milky that it's also a foil glue and it comes um, sometimes you see it with foils in packs in sets. This glue is basically a PVC based water based glue. It's not UV. It won't work with the UV light and it works partially. You can get a partial transfer on a rock with it. If you use it on your nails, sometimes you can get a really good transfer, but rocks are really different. That is the first thing I'm going to tell you. Hi, Nisi and Jen and Karen. Um, rocks are not fingers, they're not hands, and they're cold. They are extremely cold compared to uh, what these products were made for. So we're working with UV-based nail products that were made to work on a human at 98.6 degrees. 
So if you take that into consideration, you need to warm your rock up and your glue. And when they meet, you have a better chance of um, having success with your foiling. You know, if you can't do those things, it's safe, safer if you can use a 12 LED, 12 being there's 12 LED lights in here. Um, UV, has to be UV, it has to be a purple light, a uh, little flashlight. These kind of control uh, the amount of UV light going out. It's not too strong, not too weak, and it, it just pretty much cures perfectly almost every time. So I'm kind of partial to this little guy right now. Um, you always want to have on hand Mac Art, not this one. <laughs> This has pink legs, and I know it's bizarre, but MacArt, this brand right here, MacArt, they make um, three lights like this. One is uh, char rechargeable, and that's a no. And then two are just like this. One has pink legs, and the other has white. This one with the pink legs, and I'm going to show you the difference here, is ultra bright and I they're both six watt lights sold as identical one's pink and one's white so this is the Mac art white this is very old and, and beat up but you can see how nice and dim and oops and um see how it's kind of nice and dim and it kind of warms up to the situation and it gets brighter as it goes okay this guy hi Trina and Amanda this guy, oops, other way, is just so bright right out the gate. It's way, way, way too much. So this wrinkles your foils just almost instantly. And because these are so short, it's like right on your rock. So if you use these, these really, really bright light ones, um, you're going to notice that your foil glue just wrinkles instantly and you get these pits and it's a disaster. So I do recommend you stay away from these. These will cure some resins. Now when I say that, it's not going to cure resin on your rock. They won't work. But it will cure little resin um, jewelries and stuff like that. I don't know how it works that way, but it will not cure resin on a rock fully. So don't try to use little ones on resin. So, MacArt 6 watt white legs or 12 LED flashlight. Those are the only lights that I recommend for foil glue, period. Um, nothing else. You can, the brand of this doesn't matter as long as there's 12 LEDs here. Um, these are not rules. It's, these are, I have ruled out a lot of things. I've done product testing and uh, you know, failed a lot. And with failure comes growth. So trust me when I tell you nine doesn't work and more than 12 is too much. So 12 is the sweet spot. <laughs> hey, Thelma, thank you for coming. Um, so UV flashlight or Mac art six watt white legs, not rechargeable. Okay. Next we have the big lights. And um, I really don't have a preference per se as far as brand goes on the big light other than using it for resin, um, preferably higher wattage um, is the way you want to go. I, I had a 48 watt to start and it never cured my resin totally. I had to take them outside to get the job done. And that's no fun. I don't think it is anyways. <laughs> So uh, I like, this one is Beatles, it's an 84 watt, um, I forgot how many lights are back here, but let me unplug it and see. Let's see what it says. So when you're looking at your lamp, the power is 84 watts, it has 42 bulbs. Now let's talk about the power and the bulbs. The inside of your light, you want to make sure these lights are coming as down as far as they can. Some of these lights have a few up here and a few over here, and they don't come all the way down. That is not going to work. 
it's it's not going to cure anything evenly so it might work for your fingernails but it's not going to work for rock art so you really want to get something that is spread out and has a nice um nice amount of lights nice wattage you want i would go over 80 watts really it doesn't need to be beetles and as a matter of fact i'm not going to talk bad about them this is a great light but if something goes wrong with it, it's not returnable and the company's kind of icky about that. Now, I love their glue and all of that and, and I use it every day. This light, though, they, they don't like to take it back. So, I wouldn't recommend buying that light. <laughs> now, instead of that light, there's a Joy T that Katie Thompson uses. They're identical pretty much, just different brands. They have the same amount, of, well, hers is 82 watts, but it's the same amount of lights, same setup, same housing. The bottom top uh, pops off of it so you can um, work on bigger rocks and such. So, I don't know why I'm not seeing the message again. Hi, Lori. <laughs> um, Sydney's asking, she got a Beetle 6 watt with a 90 second setting. I haven't tried that one, actually. Um... I would say do a tester rock. If you guys have six watt lights, see there is another six watt light that I was recommending for a while and it was from Five Below and I believe it was by Sun. And they were great and then all of a sudden they weren't. So I don't know what happened there. Like the first 10 that I bought, because I give them out as gifts, um, were wonderful. And then they started causing bubbles and over curing so this is this is the new best friend <laughs> and that's another thing with boiling rocks is it changes nothing is set in stone <laughs> pun intended nothing is set in stone um there are really no rules other than uh there are no rules that's the rule okay so we've covered the lights glues there are three glues that i recommend only three not saying there aren't others but these are the three that um, are my go-to's there may be others and if you know of one that works really really great please please let us know creative rock art and foil techniques come over to Facebook and uh, tell us <laughs> let us know what you're using because uh, we need to know that we need options more options are always always best Um. Sorry, I gotta fast forward my own <laughs> time over here too. Here we go. Um, okay, so there's Beetles Nail Art Foil Glue, SXC, and Mac Art. Mac Art is the one that I started with, and I do love this brand. They're the higher cost of them, uh, of the three, um, but I, I do love it. I wouldn't say one is far superior than the other. The big differences are smell and consistency. SXC tends to kind of wax and wane with smell and uh, thickness. Sometimes it's nice and thin and clear and sometimes it's thick and kind of cloudy, but it still works. So, and funny thing is, I kind of prefer it that way because it, it, I don't know, the foils work better for me. But my favorite is this Beetles here. I don't, it to me doesn't have as much odor and it's just a smoother application. Now some people have had bubbles happen with this, but I don't know that it's the glue. Anyways, so those are the only glues that I recommend. They have to say nail art foil glue, okay? Because these lines do sell nail, nail glue and that is not what this is. Okay. There are also top coats and base coats. <laughs> Let's just confuse you some more, right? Hi, Katie. <laughs> Hello. So a base coat is something you apply on your nail basically first uh, before you do uh, any other like polishes or glues or anything like that and it it kind of bonds with the other products so it's made to work with those so on rocks say you're uh, working on a really bumpy rock well i had one picked up 
I don't know what I did with it. This one worked. Okay, so say you're working on a really, really bumpy rock and um, you've tried your foils and they are just wrinkling and pitting and you can't get a good transfer. That's when the base coats come in handy because they will fill in those uh, grooves and valleys and pits and bumps. Before we get to that, oh, stop, urk, put on the brakes. I forgot the most important part about all of this, and that is PPE. So we're going to back up and have a little safety conversation here. A few things. Um, if you're using UV products, you need to wear a mask. Um, it's very, very harmful for your lungs. So minimally, this one, minimum N95, okay? I don't, I recommend the full, 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 full gut though. Here. This is the one you should be wearing. I know, the full respirator. Yes, exactly. The same one you wear with your resin. You get this with goggles. It comes with goggles. Which, trust me, these, oh my gosh, I got acetone in my eye about, I don't know, three weeks ago, and I thought I was going to die. So, and my eye was pretty much quitting on me. <laughs> it was leaving. <laughs> so, PPE, please, please, please protect yourself. It's super duper important. Um, we love you and we want you to hang out. So, do the right thing. While I'm on live, I use these, or when I'm doing tutorial tutorials, because if not, I sound like Darth Vader. You can't hear me in the other one. So, gloves, also another must. Um, there is a severe reaction to these products, and not everybody has it, but you don't have it to start with. It's a kind of an accumulative um, allergy. So, I have it, and it's horrible, and you can see bubbles and blisters and scars on me it's from all of this but I love it and I can't stop so okay we're done with the PPE talk <laughs> no worries Julie hi Kathy and Marie and Jen wow hello everyone and Allison Trina okay so I'm going to show you some examples of when a base would come in handy. Uh, Beatles calls theirs foundation. Some nail companies call it foundation and that's a base um, also. And you'll see these in, oh that's a top coat. I'm sorry. Like SXC has a base coat. Usually they're pretty well labeled but you have to be careful because they look the same. And look, Beatles base coat, nail art foil glue, top coat. They all look the same. So you have to read your bottles. And man, I have messed that up <laughs> so badly. Okay. So I'm just going to put some foil here or some glue down here so you can see the difference between the two applications. Actually, we'll do it this way. So I'm going to use that and then I'm going to cure it one cycle with the MAC art. So while that's working, let's talk about the foils because there are many different types of foils. Um, generally you see these kind. This is usually what everybody starts with. You usually get these in a kit like Beatles has this great kit, which I really highly recommend when you're getting started. Why can't I find? glue. Um, oh, here it is. It comes with these two and this set, two nail art foil glues, and they come in here, two pack. I have one open right now. And you get uh, some, you know, colors, and they're faceted, full metallics, which are a nightmare to work with. <laughs> but I'm going to show you how to work with them successfully. <laughs> and then you get some holographics and florals, which I think this is a good kind of mix-up. But they're still not, you don't have any of the transparent 
holographic, which is what I recommend for you guys to start with. Um, can you guys see okay? It looks really blurry on TV. Not on my camera, but maybe my signal is bad. And where's the comment? Uh, the Facebook group is Creative Rock Art and Foil Techniques. Sidna, I thought you were on there. Hmm. Um, yep. Yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad. Maybe it's just my TV. <laughs> okay, so once you have your glue cured you're going to take off a strip of what foil you're working with let's use one that we can see i'm going to use this dark one so we can see the color underneath in the spots where it's inevitably not going to come off <laughs> so when you're working with metallics and if you guys have done some foiling you know and you have seen this and you have screamed and cussed me, I'm sure. <laughs> so, here's a metallic transfer. Yeah, that's what you're going to get. And people are like, what am I doing wrong? Oh my God. Okay, it's not you. It's the rock. It's, it's basically physics with foil and glue and the temperatures. And this is a, a nightmare scenario. So, how to fix this foundation warm up your foil glue and make sure you're using the right light those three things will help you if you're working with metallics so I'm gonna put the base coat on you can foil over foil so that's a great thing you put the base coat And then you cure that. <laughs> Who else is out there? It's blurry for Katie. I wonder if it's our area. That's so weird. Huh. Maybe our internet's weird over here today in Texas, but we're 40 minutes apart, so that shouldn't be. Katie, who's your provider? Are you Spectrum too? Okay. So after your foundation base coat cures, here's where people uh, go wrong. It's not time for foil. Now you put your foil glue on top of that. And how I'm applying it right now with this brush out of the jar is not how you would use it on your art. This is just for an example. And I'll show you what to do with that. Me too, Katie. I'm Spectrum. This has got to be a Spectrum thing then. Because it's all depixelating like, you know, when I say depixel, I don't know what that is. It's, you know, in the little squares. Almost like we're having a storm or something, but. It's usually 60 seconds on uh, the Mac art. 60. Yeah, I believe it's 60. Oh, I forgot to tell you when I said let's talk about the power on the big light. Um, usually the big lights. Let me finish this and then I'll go back to that. Okay, so now you'll see there is a little dip here 
on one side and you can get a soft brush a silicone tip nail tool like this and if you don't have any of those you can use a ball stylus which most of us have that with the ball on the end of it and push it down in there but your transfer should be a whole heck of a lot better this time we still have some issues but it's nothing like it was so in these places when you're lifting up a metallic foil first of all don't pull it off straight like I did you want to pull it up slowly a little bit at a time put it back down where you see it didn't adhere lay it back down in there that way you get it nice and the pattern stays true so that's one way to save your um, disaster you can go back and get full coverage with a metallic Okay, so back to the light for a second. Sorry, I got to back up. <laughs> so on top here, you'll see there's three settings. 30, 60, 20. So if this is an 84 watt light, <clears throat> the, the power is split up between these. So say you hit 120 seconds. That's actually going to be your weakest power setting. So you're going to get the least aggressive light if you hit this one and that's because it's sending all of it over there or I'm sorry yeah it's sending it all over here so you get it's not spread out this 60 second one is going to be half power I'm lying it's the other way this <laughs> this is going to be one third power half power full power this 30 second is going to be strong aggressive in your face cure it right now fast okay you're gonna get everybody thinks this is the least amount and this is medium and this is high it's backwards this is this is low this is medium and that's high it's just shorter times so hopefully that helps I don't know how to explain that in a I don't know <laughs> in an electric electrician manner but <laughs> hopefully you guys get what I'm saying and I didn't just completely mess mess up your head so this one is is least aggressive middle of the road and super aggressive so just remember the less amount of time the more aggressive the cure so if you're popping your rocks in a big light for 30 seconds thinking that it's going to cure your foil glue it probably is wrinkling it and that is definitely the cause Okay, so we went over lights and glues and base coats. So then there are top coats and resin. So I don't really think top coat matters. I haven't come across one that doesn't work well. They're all really great. UV top coats are pretty consistent. Um, some of them are more glossy than others and some are matte. Um, so I prefer, you know, a regular glossy top coat, no wipe because some of them have an inhibition layer, which is a sticky top. So you got to use alcohol and remove that to have a nice shine. And I, I don't like dealing with that. So no wipe top coat is what you want. Also, there's a large refill size of top coat this brand is Jelixer and this is 226 grams and my bottle's leaky but I don't know if they all are like that but this one likes to leak around that uh, the top here but I love this top coat and I refill my bottle with it And I also use that to seal a lot of my rocks. Like tonight, I'll be doing, I'll be sealing this, just the artwork, and leaving the Santorini bare because I just love that contrast between the work being nice and shiny and glossy and sealed, and then the the matte 
texture on the rock back there. So top coats, um, all of UV products are basically resin. They're just different types of resin um, and they do different things, but they're all resin based. So top coat is basically a, a UV resin. It cures super fast though and super hard. So um, I like to use this when I'm in a hurry. It's 30 seconds usually and it's done cooking. So I really, really enjoy that. Um, Mr. Resin is my go-to resin. Um, never let me down. It's a bit on the expensive side, um, but I prefer it. It's pretty consistent as well. And then a new one I came across is J Diction. And this one has been, I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and it's been really, really great. So they're comparable in um, how they cure. Um, and they're actually comparable in price. I was thinking this one was far less, but it's actually, it comes in two bottles of 100 grams. It's one of the packages that it comes in. I can't find the box. It comes in this box. It has two bottles and they're 100 grams each. It's nice and securely sealed here. Um, and it comes with these tops. I, I kind of prefer these little bottles. They're easier to use. And this top is like just perfect. It's a more accurate application. So I, I do like that. That's a plus on that side. Anyways, there's 50 more grams in this one. And they're about the same price. This one I think is 29. And this one is 20 or 22. So it's very closely priced. So those are to seal your rocks or to seal your products. And top coat is also used for some other applications like chrome powders and, you know, making glues and making neon UV paint, which is not a foil. So we're not going to get into that stuff today. But um, there are lots of tutorials that go over those uh, on this channel. So you can back up and check out um, all, a whole bunch of those. Okay, so let's go ahead and make some art. What do you guys want to, you want to make a fox? So I'm going to go ahead and start with, um, yes, Jen, yay for large bottles of top coat. Thank you, Julie. Yay. Yeah, I do have links for everything I'm talking about here. So if you guys are wanting specific items, definitely hit up Julie. She's uh, manning the links tonight. So I'm basically just going to color like a fourth grader with my watercolor pins here. And this should go pretty fast. They dry quickly too. Go about in here. I really enjoy watercolor pens. They're pretty forgiving and you can manipulate them a lot. Now this is not good for outdoor art. They will fade. Little foxes are so cute. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Uh-oh, Nisi, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oops, I didn't want to color that part. Well, I hope everybody kind of, that helped a little bit. You know, now you can see the actual application to, um, I don't know. I know it can be super confusing, especially right when you're in it and you're, you come across an issue. You're like, what, what do I do with this mess? Right? So hopefully we can talk through some situations and, um, figure out some fixes. I ran out of uh, my highlighter the other day, my orange highlighter, so I was using my 
watercolor pen for orders. And uh, yeah, so now I'm almost out of orange. So I'm going to actually show you guys a lot more foil as we go along. And what I'm going to show you mostly, you can pick up on Amazon. And then I do sell uh, some foils myself in my Etsy shop. Um, right now I'm uh, a little bit low on stock, but I do have the basic transparents and the metallic colors in right now. But I do have 62 new styles showing up here any day now. So in the next couple of weeks, we'll have lots of options for foil. Lots of fun ones. Okay, Mr. Fox, or Mrs. Fox, or whatever. <laughs> Foxy Foxy. And do some pink ears here. I wanted to keep this kind of more simple. I tend to get a little carried away with... <clears throat> <laughs> bling and extravagance so tonight we're going to bling it out with just foil and so I made big areas to work with and I want to say thank you to um ah, Julie and I'm sorry Helen yeah Helen Miller for the Fox recommendations today Isn't he cute already? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh no. Bambi. The hollow silver zebra foil. I'm out. <laughs> but it is a cool foil. And it's uh, it's on reorder. So it is on its way. Just talking about this one, guys. Right? Isn't that fun? See, I have a little tiny, this is all I have left of it. Isn't it pretty? But we're going to use it tonight if you want to, if you want a zebra fox. <laughs> Isn't that fun? All right. So these are Wanda Foil, I call them. These are the transparent holographics. And I usually carry 10 or 11 or 12 at a time, different um, styles. And they'll come in, um, like this one, discs, clear, large broken glass, large cracked glass, crushed glass, small crushed glass, or is that the digital pixels? I get them confused. This one is the stars. That's the digital, like the pixels, the little round disco ball looking stuff. I call this one laser. Shards of glass. <laughs> Big stars. Uh, another pixely thing and another clear one because I'm out of stock on this or getting out of stock. So. so we saw the zebra stripe. These are just different sorts of foils. These are high quality foil. They're thicker and they're easy release, so they come off super easy, pretty consistent each time. And they're four centimeters wide, if you can see that. Um, a lot of times when you order foil, they come in this size, which is just almost half, if you can see that. Um, so these are two and a half centimeters wide usually. So I always order four centimeters wide, so you always get double the width. And then I give you 100 centimeters in length, minimally. Most of the sets you buy will give you between 100, 50 and 100. So you're getting shorted there. And then I have these beautiful metallics that are easy release. They're similar to what I used here, but not the same. So you can see that. You know, they, 
Dan, <laughs> you say you wish they would come in a three by five or larger. I am exploring some options for large rolls. They're going to be wide, like paper, eight and a half by eleven sheets. It's actually going to be in a long roll, and I'm going to have it available. I'm hoping. Keep your fingers crossed. And this isn't happening right away because I got to save a whole bunch of money. But <laughs> so I'm hoping to have these foils like this available in big sheets. There won't be a whole bunch of different styles, but maybe some basics. And we'll start there. And if it goes well, I'll order more. But yes, can you believe it? I know that's exciting because you can do bigger, big areas and not have the lines in your work. That is a huge selling point for me. Okay, sorry. See, it's my example, Fox. <laughs> Back to work, right? Get back to the job, lady. So I'm just going to use a little bit of a lighter color here. Hey, Janet. Hey, thank you for popping on. Actually, if you guys are interested in ordering those larger sheets, um, Janet, can you share the link to your friend, Janet, with the foils available? Um, she has a link to someone who is selling them right now. So go ahead and pop in there, and if you want to try them out to see if you like them, that'd be cool. For the face part that I want to stay white, I'm just going to use plain water and blend back into the other watercolor to soften up that line right there. Yay, pretty little fox. A little bit of a gray. I'm just going to do a little bit of shading, shadowing.
Oops, wrong one. <laughs> Um, I used a black Posca pen to do my outline, 1MR. Okay, and where foils kind of save our rears <laughs> is um, we can hide a lot of this um, not blending, blending stuff. So if you're like me and can't really paint or color well, yes, that's me. Foils are a blessing. So we can cover that right up. Okay, this should just be close to being dry here. Yay, cutie fox. What do you guys think? Do you like that fox? A rhinestone nose, maybe, yeah. We can add some bling, I guess, later. What is this? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Lori, hi. All right, let me cap the pins. Put those away. Oh, I see a boo-boo on my paper. Not on my fox, on my rock. Shame on me. This is a block. A sanding block from the Dollar Tree is just like a sponge with sandpaper on it. Uh, saves my rear a lot. I'll show you guys some uh, tools and tips and tricks, things I have around me that also save my hide. Uh, one of them is shop towels. If you guys can get a hold of these blue shop towels, they are amazing. And they're not lint free, but they're kind of lower lint. And they're sturdy, you know, they kind of hang out. So what I do is I, you know, use them in the roll and then I cut them fours. Basically, I cut them into fours. And then to make the little ones that I use a lot with the UV products for my brushes, um, I cut those into fours. So it's all fours. Just fold and cut, fold and cut, fold and cut. Simple that way. Okay, so let's do some foiling. So for beginning, your very first time foiling, I highly recommend that you use the transparent, these guys. They're so forgiving and they're immediate gratification. <laughs> and then you'll fall right in love with foiling and you'll be good. <laughs> Save the metallics for when you've had some practice because they are going to cause you some headaches. I promise they will. But they're also worth it if you can practice and get better at the application first and then work with those metallics. That's my recommendation. But now I know y'all are going to go jump in there and, and do them anyways because that's what we do. Because <laughs> they're beautiful. <laughs> like, I need it to be full metallic. <laughs> uh, hi, Leanne. I get my drawings everywhere today. Julie gave me this Julie and Helen Miller they both sent me the same fox today how funny is that um so I was like that must be what I'm doing tonight I have to do this fox because it's shown up twice <laughs> and I've had more foxes during the week from D Daigle and I mean I don't know what's going on with foxes is something is there a fox contest going on in one of the groups or is it fox day somewhere or... I don't know but okay members send me pictures and 
I try to accommodate, you know, if they have requests or uh, whatever. And then I have commissions that I work on. On I try to film everything I do so that everybody can learn and do what I do. So if I post something, I want you to be able to recreate it pretty much. Um, only a couple of times have I ever actually made something that was requested not to be reproduced. So, um, yeah, most of them are from draw, uh, coloring books, print, Pinterest, <laughs> Google, uh, and you guys. So, thank you. Okay, so for uh, Mr. Fox, we're going to do kind of a mashup of different things. That way you can see different foils. So, I'm going to let you guys build the fox. <laughs> Mama! <laughs> Hi there! Aww. Okay, so let's see. For the ears, let's do... Start in the pink area. Let's do the discs, yeah? I'll start there and then you guys jump in there and tell me what you would like. So, a tool that I use is a either a painting palette or I also use sticker backs, paper, waxy paper backs, recycle, uh, anything plasticky. Um, like this is paper from our the copy paper, the wrapping around it has like a waxy coating on it. So, I use that to put my products on. Or I'll just put it right on my mat. And if I use these, I pop these into the UV light and then peel out the paint or the glue. So the best way to use this, honest to goodness, is to pour a little off at a time, like so. Close up your bottle and put it away from the light. Get them away from the light. Because <clears throat> when you're first starting, chances are you're going to cure everything around you because you're going to forget. And you're going to cure your brush, you're going to cure your glue, you're going to cure anything that's open and wet around you. These are in dark bottles, so that's sort of protecting, but you still can cure it in here. So just move it out of the way. And you're also going to want some disposable eyeliner brushes, and they look like this. They usually come in packs of one or two hundred for between seven and fifteen dollars. Totally affordable and totally totally necessary. You'll see why. So disposable brush. Now if you don't have these and you do have some really really fine deep, not that one. <laughs> Pick up one that's reasonable here. Okay how about this one? <laughs> so if you have some detail brushes, absolutely these are made to work with UV products. These are nail brushes. They're synthetic and they you can clean them out very easily with alcohol. Um, I just, I don't like to trash my brushes, so I just use the disposable ones. Oops, get on there. So, you want to pick up some glue and paint. You put your glue where you want your foil to be. So, to get into these little space or these pointy areas like this, you need a detail brush. And you cannot do that with the fingernail polish brush. That's why these brushes are um, pretty much on my mandatory list. Like, you know, there's luxury things and there's things that you must have. So the must have list is proper glue, which is the one of the three, a proper light which is the six watt Mac art with white legs and the flashlight. I prefer you have them both, but if not one or the other and, um, some good foil. And that's all you need to really do this. This is optional, but I think it's still mandatory. You can get by without it, but I wouldn't. Oh, good up, good Lori. That's great. Lori uses bottle caps, water bottle caps. What a great idea! Just, yep. 
And if you want it to be sure, you know, that there's no, like this isn't dripping out there in the trash or whatever, just pop it in your UV light and cure it because that takes all of the risk out of it. You know, in art, we do, um, we kind of have a big footprint, so it's better to reduce, reuse, and recycle when you can. You can even um, use alcohol and use these brushes three, four, five times until this piece will come out. When that happens, you can toss it. So you can really make things last a while. Okay, so I'm going to use my favorite handy dandy flashlight. And it's faster than this little light. I don't know why because it seems like it would be weaker. But it's not. <laughs> it's totally faster. It takes about half the time. Sometimes one third the amount of time. Just depending on the temperature, you know, of your surroundings. Your rock and your glue in the winter time oh you guys the winter time is such a battle <laughs> with resin and with foil you'll see lots of bubbles and lots of wrinkles and you just have to have some TLC have a heating pad and a way to warm up your glue a coffee cup full of warm water not full I'm sorry just a little warm water in the bottom just set your bottle in there don't let the water get around the top part but dry it off before you open it you guys ready because this is magic <laughs> most of you have already seen this but for those of you popping in today we're live but this will be uploaded see there look at that and now you have this whole new medium to work with and I just think it's the most beautiful thing ever, obviously. Okay, let's talk about what just happened. So, I did a no-no. <laughs> when you lay it down, that's where it lives. And if you lift it up, you're going to mess up your pattern. So, I'll show you. And you run the risk of your foil, where you've removed the foil, sticking to the glue. And that is very, very sticky. So, it will pull the glue off of your rock and take paint with it. I used watercolor so it won't take the paint but it will take the glue if I'm not careful. But I kind of know how to get it off of there. Now had that been acrylic there would have been no getting around. That would have pulled the paint and the design right off of my rock. So you got to be super careful not to let... Can you see these spaces that have been used in there? Don't let that touch the glue because that's a nightmare. Okay, so the way I avoid that, because it's really hard to see on these, is keep a little pair of scissors handy, nice sharp pair, and cut off the bits you've used. And get rid of those. <clears throat> okay, and then move on to your next area that you want to foil. And you just work your way around your art. If you've noticed, I lined my work with a thick black line that is on purpose it's um foil glue for some reason it kind of likes a fence you know what I mean like if you put a line down it sort of stays in there most of the time so if you line well you can um, pretty much control where your glue is going by lining first. There are some instances where I do foil first and then line, and I always have to go back and touch up my lining, always, that's a given. But it does help to control the flow of glue. Now you can do as much or as little as you're comfortable with. I do recommend starting small, like I'm doing now when you're first starting off. Do little bits at a time so that you can learn what your light is like and what your what foils feel like how glue goes down um, it's kind of 
muscle memory with your hand. It's like learning to draw or paint. Um, at first it's awkward, you know, you're like, ew, I don't think I can do this. It just feels weird. It doesn't feel normal to paint with glue, <laughs> but it's good. You'll, you'll figure it out and it'll come second nature if you, you know, turn into a crazy maniac like me who has to foil darn near everything. My poor son, if he stood still long enough, I would foil him. Especially now since I buy it in. I buy it 100 meters at a time. Oh my gosh, can you even believe that? Think of how long 100 meters is, you guys. 120 meters, sorry. Think of that. How long is that? That's almost 40 feet of foil. 40 feet! Right. Wrap that around your head 50 times. Cure first. <laughs> Thank you. I almost did the same thing. Cure first. I'm glad I'm reading comments, Bambi, because I'm getting distracted. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny, Allison. If I foil him, I definitely will take pics. That will be blackmail. <laughs> oh, God, how funny. Shoot, it might take all 100 meters to bling me out. Maybe two or 300. All right, so on the ears, I think I'm going to use the small crushed glass looking stuff right here this one isn't that pretty i love these transparent ones because you can make any color of your paint into a metallic so the one we have trouble finding is black so if you want black you paint it black and then you use a transparent foil on top and you've got some beautiful metallic. Pretty little fox. Now the ones I use are easy release, but if these were the other style, I would be using a tool to make sure that they went down. To make sure they went down um, nice and smooth. And they're very staticky. You are going to live with foils attached to you. Um, another tip for that is to keep a dryer towel handy, a dryer sheet, cut it up into little strips and tuck it inside uh, your boxes or near you so where you can rub your fingers on it and um, it will help with the static on your foils. Oh, I forgot to do that here. Funny, haha. -ha. Excuse me. Okay, so for the bigger parts in here, absolutely, you can use your bigger brush and put some, get some miles down there. And 
And I like to stay off of my lines, like my black liner, because it gives definition. If you notice, foil glue kind of gives you a 3D raised look, almost like you have a puffy sticker on your rock. But it's totally an accomplished feeling when you're done and it looks like a sticker. It, nobody believes you could have done that, but you did do that. And who cares if they believe you anyways? You know, I like your idea about the rhinestone nose, so I'm going to go right over the nose. And glue is sort of self-leveling, so... You want to put enough on that you can kind of see that happening. Also, because it's a resin, you can torch it if you see bubbles, which I highly recommend torching most of the time. Torch being light, flame, a fire. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. This is a brulee torch or a cigar torch. And you do it just the same way you would resin. So I'm going to tilt it so you can see. There's not many bubbles, but watch. And that's all you do. And that's done. You just pop those bubbles and move on. Now you cure it. Thank you. <laughs> exactly, Amanda. The satisfaction you get from it is what matters. Absolutely. You know, somebody gave me some really great advice one time. And it was, what other people think about you or your work or anything is none of your business. I didn't get it at first. I was like, what? I, it is my business what they think about me. You know, you always think. Why don't they like me? Or why didn't they like my work? Or why are they? It doesn't matter. Because it's none of our business. We can't change it or control it. So just be happy. Right? What's the song, Lori? Happy. Lori says, I'm so Feral Williams. Be Feral. Be a Feral Williams. All right, and for the rest of the body, I want to use the larger crushed glass. Another tool I recommend are tweezers, pointy tweezers. Thank you. Cat mom's on. This is the one I call large crush, crushed glass. So now we're going to have a line. So how I would do that is I would lay this down here and don't seal the edge super tight. So leave the edge sort of soft, I guess would be the right word. <laughs> and then I'm going to use my brush to blend this in over here, but not do the edge down there. Okay. And then Lift up slow, push back down, make sure all the holes are filled in. And that edge should be soft, so you can't see it too, too much that way. Now, when you apply the other part, because there's no foil down here, 
it should blend nicely without a big seam there. That works with non-patterned foil. This one's semi-patterned, but if I was using something like this, you would be able to see that. So you would need to line up your pattern. And that's another thing we can learn. See, pretty fox? So we have a small line here, but not too much, not too bad. Pretty little baby. All right, let's do this little piece down here. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, maybe a pink crystal or something there. I don't have a pink triangle, though. So I'll probably do a A, B. See what I have. A little triangle nose. So for the fluffer hairs, what should we, since those need to stay white, maybe, what do you think, stars? <clears throat> do little stars. Okay, do both of the little white ear parts here. So for the ear parts, I think I want to do the uh, zebra, Bambi's favorite. <laughs> so our fox is probably going to look bit crazy later because I want to just show you some of the different foils so I like that. Julie, just smile. It ticks them off. I know. You know what the best revenge in life is, right? Living life well. People cannot stand it. If you're doing good in your life and, you know, you have revenge to get on someone, just let them watch you have a great life. <laughs> I love it. Never crazy, just extra. Mm -hmm. I've been told I'm a little extra sometimes. All right, let's see. You ready, Bambi? So with these foils, sometimes it takes longer cure time. Let's see which way do I want to do it? Go and do it this way. So sometimes when you pull off, they don't want to stay down there. So then you can right through the top of them, turn on your light, and cure the glue some more.
and then you'll get a nice perfect transfer. Cute. Oop, I already did that. Silly me. And sometimes it's hard to figure out which side goes down. Okay, especially with these. They look the same on each side. So if you put gloves on, you can really feel it. Drag your fingers across, and the side that kind of grips onto your gloves goes on the rock. Trying to find a similar. <laughs> so it was right in about. Yeah, sort of. Still cute. All right, I'm going to do the tail. I have ordered, um, a toolkit that's coming tomorrow and it's coming with a slice I think it's acrylic actually acrylic made um, palette to work off of but I have um, agate slices that you can do that with too so if you have a piece of sliced agate or a thin slice of something you can use your products right on that I'll show you what that is in just a minute You see it a lot in um, salons or on nail um, nail art videos. That's where I get a lot of my ideas. I guess I won't show you. I cleaned up my room earlier, so I don't know where I put them. Okay. Isn't yeah? That's the one I was looking for. <laughs> what did I do with that? You guys don't know what I did with it, did you? It's so weird. But yeah, that's exactly an agate slice. So you can just use your products, work with it, and then use alcohol to clean it off. Perfect. I had to turn my fan on. It's getting a little warm in here. So I'm going to use this one on the tail. I'm going to do um, some floral prints in here.
BM. The agate slices you can pick up from Yvonne M. Davenport's Bar Hawk, and I can give you her information if you were wanting an agate slice, uh, some to paint on. They're amazing. Oh my gosh. Yes, they're great. And now I'm going for it. One whole big area. Can you believe it? I just wanted to show you that you can cure a larger area all at once if you need to with your 6 watt light. And I'm actually hoping that it wrinkles so you guys can see a double foil with um base coat it may not though because Santorini is pretty easy to foil on Guess what, guys? I think I just used top coat. I did. <laughs> okay, good. Lord. Okay, so if you do this and you use top coat mixed with nail foil glue, oh my God, you got to cure it. Cure it all and then start off. <laughs> it's inevitable. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, that's top coat. Whew. See? <laughs> Don't be me. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I did that. I think this is nail foil glue down there. <laughs> I was going to use a 6 watt, but now I'm all flustered. Okay, so these feet... <laughs> <laughs> we can foil. <laughs> I should quit sticking around here. Oh. That's a first. I've never seen it do that. Okay, well, it might stick to top coat, guys. Wow. Seriously? Look, we're learning something here. I don't know that this would work every time, so don't, um, don't quote me on it. doesn't work very well. So, <laughs> but look at that. It's sort of stuck to top coat a little bit. That's hilarious. Okay, so we gotta go at it again. Nail art foil glue. 
That's okay. That's just almost better than wrinkles because I wanted to do use the foil as a base coat or the first layer as a base coat. And that's what we're doing. So if you don't have base coat, you can use top coat or foil glue as a base coat. Just do it twice. And because we already put like a pattern down here, we're going to put a different pattern on top of it to sort of hide the uh-ohs. Kind of like covering up a tattoo, you know? Exactly. That's what today is about. Boo-boos and mistakes and show it all. It's tips and tricks, fails and fixes. That's what's up today. Nail art foil glue. <laughs> Let me make sure we're doing the right thing here. Okay, so I think on top of this one we're going to do some flowers. But I'm going to cure that with the big light. Not the big one, but the 6 watt. Let's see. Be right back. What do you think? These? Or these? These pretties? Oh my god, they're gorgeous. This is my favorite, favorite foils of all time. And guess what, guys? I'm going to be distributing these. Yep. I'm going to have the whole line of them, though. There's actually 16 in the whole line. This is only 10 of the 16. But So those, or the honeycomb, is really pretty. I like this one, but this one, oh my gosh, this one's crazy pretty, too. But it's like a lacy. I think the first flowers with the polka dots. Yeah, that's not how you roll your foils back in there, by the way. Okay, that's another thing. Let's do it. This is what... When you get your foils in a box, I don't sell foils in a box, so you won't get a box from me. But if you buy foils that are in a box, grab a paint pen, a large one, and start your foil there. And the static will grab it, usually. Grab it under there, and then... Just roll. Oops. <laughs> and don't let it go. So, anyways, it should go pretty fast once it grabs. Yeah, there we go. And then just twist that baby up. like and then roll back one twist off and tap it down together like so and then put the tuck that side down on the bottom and pop it in your and it won't come undone isn't that cool all right so this one I love this particular foil for many different reasons, but I do a lot of insects. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but can you see these dots? I use that on the insect eyes. <laughs> Pretty cool. 
Anyways, I like to cut these at this. There's like a pattern in them, sort of. Anyway, so I like to cut them in between the two sets of flowers. So, let's see if we can do something here with this pattern. I'm going to go this way first. And I put creases in there. And I'll show you. Hopefully we got one in the middle of the flower. I think we did. Good. So lift up slow. When you lift up, tilt your rock. When you're working with patterns, tilt your rock to see if you're getting transfer. See that right there? So you want to lay that back down on your rock. And these work pretty good. You can use a Q-tip, sponge tip applicator, a um, silicone tip nail tool, or the brush, which I love. And that will iron out the wrinkles. This brush helps a lot to iron out those wrinkles. And then pop that down. And make sure your edges are nice and good. And then lift up again. See, now you got a full transfer. And if you don't, lay it back down. But don't pull it all the way off until you're good. You know, you can see that it did transfer the way you wanted it to. Beautiful. You can see just a little bit of the blank spot in the tail, but not too bad. All of this one transferred nicely. See all the spots in there? <laughs> so cute. So now we have a fox with a cute tail. And I'm going to put a little bit of this foil back here. You just want to make sure there's no sticky spots left. Okay. I like our Mr. Fox. Mrs. Fox. Should we do the face? You guys want to do another floral on the face, a different one? Maybe we can do that. Let me see if I can do it. I'll line up. See this pretty design in there? Maybe we can line it up here. Like that. And then line it down here again. I'll show you guys how to line up a foil pattern. Okay. So you want to plan it out first. And it won't work this way so you got to cut another piece that matches this piece so you'll have two matching foils to work with okay so you can do this with a piece of tape or if you're um, good with your hands you can just lay them down on the foil but I kind of like to tape them together so figure out you're just mapping out how you want your foils to go so I kind of want that pattern in between the ears okay so then I'm going to find in the pattern the most similar way to see right here that part of this design so it's like right about there so I would put this down to try to match up with that design up there and then it will um, 
you're basically ironing them together, I guess. I don't know how to say that, but. So yeah, so that's what we'll do. So I'm gonna put on the glue and then we will lay it down. That's pretty empty. Nail art foil glue. Yes, thank you, Amanda. <laughs> I get spacey headed. I'm sorry. I lose my words a lot. <laughs> Brain fog. Any of you live by the spoon theory? I don't know if you noticed, but I do my tutorials at night, which is when I have the least amount of spoons left. <laughs> Okay. And I'm going to cure that. I think I need to re. No, that's enough. I didn't think I cut them big enough, but I think I did. No, I didn't. But you got to cut them wide enough to cover your whole area. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to do more than one seam, and that is no fun. So that should be... No, that one will work, I think. Oh, that's fantastic, Amanda. I love that. Yay! Bonding time. <laughs> what an honor. That's still gooey because I have my light sort of on and off. So I'm going to hit it with this torch. Just to finish cooking this part. Okay, just let me check my plan here one more time before I lay it in the glue. So, I had to turn it over. Okay, I think I got my idea. <clears throat> here we go. Are you ready? We're testing my emergency broadcast system. Holy cow. I can't see. There's a glare. <laughs> Please lay down. Will the real Slim Shady please stand up? Remember that edge. Don't go. It might seal itself, but... Ooh, 
pretty face. Look at that. Oh, foxy, foxy. Okay, the line we have here, I want to try to line it with this, with the nose, the bridge, like that. Maybe. No. I don't know why I can't see it now. I saw it a minute ago. There it is. Hopefully it'll be close. Or it may just be terrible. Never know. Yeah, sort of. You can see the line. Darn it, I was hoping it would mesh better. Okay, well, it's close, but no. <laughs> All right, for the nose, let's pick out a fun triangle I think I have some triangles. Where I had, oh, there they are. They're kind of big, but. It kind of makes the nose disappear. That's not going to work. Okay, hang on. I have a black crystal. Let's see. That's not black. That's black. They might be too small, though. <laughs> but we can make a triangle. How do you make a triangle with circles? Three, right? Look. Now how cute is that, right? They're too, the other ones were too shiny because I put the holographic here. They just make it disappear into the, that's pretty cute. <laughs> you guys like it? So then you want to touch up your, uh, you want to take your sequins back off, touch up your paint, and then do your top coat. I'm going to use top coat. You can use resin if you want. Okay. So I'm going to just touch up the black.
I'll look for pink jewelry. I don't think I have. I might. I don't think I have pink enough, though, to show. I'm turning the rock to work with the curve in my hand. Hi, Katie. <laughs> did you see what I did a little bit ago? Yeah, I did that. But it was the perfect time to do it. Holy moly, guys. <laughs> Look at that. Watch, you want to see it disappear? It's magic. <sighs> Goodbye. See? Oh, God. You are dry. Okay, you can remove. Say you got some foil where you don't want the foil. Like you spilt some glue out here and then foil stuck to it. Say that happened. You can take alcohol to remove the foil. The glue is another story, but the foil will rub right off with alcohol. So, I don't see any foil out here that I can do it with, but... Ah, here, yeah. See this foil right here that went on there? So you remove it with alcohol. You just rub, rub. And it will lift it off the glue. See? Gone. So if you have, if you get some foil where you don't want the foil, you can take it off. And then if you need a refoil, refoil. But luckily, we have two other layers of foil under that, so that worked out. Here's some here too. Now alcohol will take off paint, and it will spread your paint. So be careful because see how it's bleeding out under the 
You gotta be careful of that. Now also, these are micro swabs. These are on the list tonight too, Julie. I have them in pink on the list. Um, see the paint on top of the foil? Quickly dab it off so you don't remove the foil, just the paint. There you go. And that's touched up. Now we're just about perfect, just about. Okay, now top coat. Um, my Etsy shop is kind of hard to find. It's Heartful Rocks Studios. Um, I can leave a link for it when I'm done. Sorry. It was a last minute decision when I opened that shop and I wasn't going to keep it, but it worked out. So. Heartful Rocks studio all one word h-e-a-r-t-f-u-l-r-o-c-k-s-s-t-u-d-i-o -E ridiculous i know i'm working on a new name hopefully wanda the foiling rock lady will be available <laughs> can you imagine if anybody had that Oh, I would fire myself. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Top coat. Okay, we're going to seal our fox. So when I do it with top coat, because I'm sealing it to the rock, I go just outside of my painting. So just right around the edges of the black. Probably about an eighth of an inch. Maybe a sixteenth. I don't know. My measurements are not. I am not the carpenter in the house. <laughs> okay, I'm going to refill my tank. This is how easy it is. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Except for I have a leaky bottle. <clears throat> now if you have to cure your way around it you need to go in sections that it makes sense to stop because you'll see where you start and stop at so like right here would be a good break to cure and then go. But I'm going to. Because this will go in the big light. So you can do the whole thing and then cure it all at once. Which is my preferred method. So it's nice and smooth. And also don't cure it until you have your rhinestones in. <laughs> I keep doing that. But if you do that. By mistake there's a handy dandy tool called bondic which comes to the rescue often and is just a great all-around adhesive UV adhesive tool to have make sure you sign your art too before this step because you'll want to seal it as well. Now you don't have to do yours like this. I just, I like this because I, I do a lot of my work with no background. I like on white. It's just gorgeous. And don't be scared, just pour it out on there. Just make sure you mix it around, or spread it around. I 
I promise I'm going to look for the pink stones. I promise. I promise. Whoa, Nisi, what? <laughs> Holy cow. Nisi. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> That's it. I'm dead. <laughs> Not repeatable. <laughs> I think I have tears streaming down my face. <laughs> So comments are disabled for like 48 hours until YouTube approves them, which I'm sure that's fine because, you know, the F word's like every other word on most channels. <laughs> um, totally fine, Nisi. <laughs> it's funny. It's not even a bad thing. <laughs> so what I was going to say is um, after a live presentation, YouTube will post it, but you won't be able to see the comments for a couple of days. So if you're watching this in those couple of days and you have no idea what I'm falling apart about, you just wait until the comments come back and then go watch again. <laughs> because we have the Nisi Show. Okay, that's how I seal mine. And you can torch top coat. It's not as effective as torching glue or um, <clears throat> resin, but it does help to warm it a bit and level it. Give it a torch. I'm going to look for pink rhinestones because I promise. Oh, it probably wouldn't work, but I have a bow. Oh. Where will that work? It's so cute, this little bow. I never noticed it before. Look at this little bow. Oh my gosh, will that work as a nose? Probably not. <laughs> Where can I put this bow, you guys? Can it go on the nose? Seriously. I'm going to put it off to the side. Oh my god, I have to have that bow. I have accumulated just some random pieces in here and they're just so dang cute. Some of them. <laughs> okay, pink, pink, pink. Oh, I do have pink. I have pink. I have pink. You probably saw, you knew that, huh? They're, they're very light though. I don't know that they're going to show. Yeah, they're going to disappear. They kind of disappear into the black, but eh, it's workable. What do you think? So cute. Oh. <laughs> you can call me Flower. So now it's a her. Someone said to put it in the middle. I think Jan did. I kind of like it off to the side, though. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a side girl. I'm a side part. <laughs> okay. Then you pop it in the big light. For it has to be up more though, huh? <laughs> I love this fox. Foxy lady. Okay. In the light. Like so. Okay. Put the fox in the den. And really, top coat only takes uh, 30 to 60 seconds, but I'm going to let it go for two minutes just because, you know, I can. And let's see, what else should we talk about here? Because I used scalpel. You <laughs> like my lid? Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. Hmm. Like my lid? 
it's effective okay yes it's got a fresh blade it's good it's all good <laughs> that is a rhinestone picker tool <sighs> awesome it makes you know because trying to pick them up with this like seriously right have y'all tried to do that like okay now it works but <laughs> Usually, it's really, really hard to do. So, let's talk about Bondic. Bondic is a UV re um, UV adhesive. Uh, comes in this nice, cool kit here. Pig's glitter. <laughs> what pig's glitter? What are we talking about? Pig's glitter? What? <laughs> Guys, I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> okay, so Bondic has a UV light on one end and the glue tube on the other. And it has a needle applicator here for precise application. But it also has a bigger one where if you need to go in and get more of it, you can. So you just open it and then you can pull out more okay and you can get I think two refills come with this kit or you can get them separate you can order refill separately you can order this light replacement to turn the light on it has a little switch on look at that precision application so if you put a little dot of glue there put something on it then you hit it like that one two three four five done it's that fast Love this. Thank you, Lonnie. Let's see. You guys ready? All done. All done. Gorgeousness. So, we have completely foiled, double foiled, and triple foiled an area. Added some rhinestones and a bow. I had tons of fun, guys. So that is basic foiling 101. I am sure positive that I forgot some things because there's just a lot to cover. So if you have questions, always never hesitate to uh, send me a PM in my messenger. I, I check those messages. I try really hard to keep up with my notifications on Facebook and YouTube, but sometimes I get thousands and I can't answer them all. So if you've left a comment for me on a post on Facebook and I haven't answered you within probably 48 hours, chances are I won't. So leave me a message in my messenger. Way better way to get a hold of me. Um, also, Facebook is doing this thing lately where they love to put you in jail if you comment too much <laughs> or if you like something too much or if you send too many messages on Messenger. So I'm in jail a lot because I answer hundreds of notifications a day. So please be patient with me. I, I really try to wrap things up, you know, within 48 hours. So if you guys, and you can ask my whole team. I, I try to share everything I know. They're, we're all a team, not my team, the team. <laughs> we're a big family. I don't own anything. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and participating in this rock foiling 101 brush touch up whatever <laughs> happy foxing i'm gonna go take care good night all